There's a good chance you have seen the price of chicken eggs go up recently. If you already have chickens producing eggs, you have instantly become famous among your family, friends, and neighbors. If you don't have any chickens, you're seriously considering adding a few this spring. So in this episode, I'm going to give it to you straight, and I'm going to tell you what you really need to know about chicken ownership. This is the Homesteading for Beginners podcast, and I'm Mona Weathers, your homesteading mentor and coach. If you desire to establish a solid foundation for your homesteading journey, then you are in the right place. I'm here to show you how, in a way that is healthy for you, your family, and your community. I'll share stories from the past 20 years of my own journey and offer you actionable steps you can take to start and maintain a healthy homestead. Chickens, also known as the gateway animal into homesteading, they are fun, entertaining, dinosaur-like birds that produce these beautifully packaged, high-protein food. It's no wonder people love the idea of owning chickens. My family, our homestead, in our homesteading journey, we have had so many chickens um, from the very beginning of our journey, it pretty much started with chickens. It was the, our gateway, well, our gateway animal, I guess, was horses. But then chickens quickly became the next thing. So I don't have an exact number, uh, but I'm, I know we've owned over 200 chickens, and that would be including meat birds. But it has to be higher than that because we did meat birds a few times. So I'm not really sure. I can't really say. And we've sold some and that sort of thing. But we've also owned tons of turkeys and ducks and chucker as well. Not tons of chucker, but we've owned chucker. So we're very familiar with poultry, and they're very similar in the way they act, but they're not all the same. They All of these birds do act and do things differently. But chickens are definitely a good one to start with. But I'm going to give you a pros and cons list because I want you to really know what you're getting into uh, when, if you're considering getting chickens and if you already have chickens, you know, just to give you some ideas of what may come in the future. I'm going to offer you a pros and cons list for chicken ownership. And, um, uh, I'm doing this because I want you to be sure that chickens is the thing that you need to be purchasing now or continue to add to. And this is just an opinion list really it's not uh it's not i'm not saying that you should or should not purchase chickens by the end of this i'm just giving you some of the things that i've learned over the many years of owning chickens so let's just get started and i will um offer you this pros and cons list but i'm going to offer the cons first because i always think it's a good idea to end on a good note. So I want to end this uh, pros and cons list with some positive parts of owning chickens. Um, So, and throughout this, I will be including a few of the stories I have of owning chickens from my old blog posts that I had from Healthy Homesteading many years ago. I'm going to include some of the little stories. They're not really stories. They're just like really the way i Podca- uh, w- the way I wrote my blog blog posts mostly years ago was like I do with uh, social media. Um, a lot of times my blog posts were like 50 words or five words in a picture. So I was really more of a social media person from the beginning. But anyway, I'll, I'll share some of that with you. So let's start with the cons list. So the truth about owning chickens cons is the first thing I would say is they don't always produce eggs. For at least six months of of growing, um, sometimes it's four, depending on the bird that you get, you can have um, certain birds will start producing eggs at four months. Those are generally the leghorns. That's why I like to get leghorns because they start producing earlier. But um, you will not instantly have eggs, obviously. That's probably a no-brainer part. (laughs) Your chicks need to grow up um, and produce eggs. Um, And after two years, they start producing way less. And during winter and molting seasons, there can be 
um, little to no eggs. So there is going to be a season of owning chickens that you will not be getting eggs. And you will likely have to still purchase food for them if your chickens are being fed a complete feed, which I recommend. But uh, you will still have to feed the chickens that are not producing eggs. Okay, so there's a con. Uh, number two, they can die suddenly. And I've had this happen many times um, by predators um, illnesses, accidents. Actually, in fact, a couple weeks ago, I had a hawk get into my chicken coop. Uh, it's, it, we have a chicken coop with a run, and this hawk found its way into the run, which was not a big op opening, so he was pretty desperate. It was right before that really bad cold snap that we had. It was right, it was the day before that. So I'm thinking he knew what was coming and he needed to get some easy food before it came. So uh, we actually ended up trapping him and letting him go. But um, the whole idea is that you never know when there's predators. We have had, we've lost um, chickens to coyotes, to bobcats. Um, I'm pretty sure a weasel had gotten into our coop at one point, um, which is really hard to keep weasels out. Um, and just a number of different animals, uh, raccoons, of course. Raccoons are probably the worst ones because they're very uh, tricky. But we've lost them to illnesses and random accidents. We had a set of meat birds and we lost one to a, a, a table. <laughs> A table, I mean, it's not funny, but a table fell on it and it was really, really sad because uh, it was just leaning up against somewhere and the table just uh, blew over in the wind more, more than likely. Um, it, you know, the table wasn't uh, out, it was fold. it was a folding table. So that was a big bummer. But anyway, the whole point is chickens can die suddenly. And this is true of all livestock, it's not just chickens. But because chickens can be very curious, they tend to find their way into places that where they get taken. <laughs> so um, uh, number three a con would be the poop. <laughs> chickens uh, create an enormous amount of poop and it smells, okay? So if you are, um, you know, really sensitive to that and sensitive to that it might be on your shoes as you walk into the house or whatever, um, you really need to take that into consideration. I mean, you set up things to where there's no chicken poop coming into the house. You can do that, of, of course. But the whole, the whole thing is, I just want you to know, chicken poop, there's lots of it. It can be, I'll talk about the cons, I mean, the pros of that. But for right now, that is a con, okay? <laughs> Something that um, is definitely a thing. It can end up on your eggs too, by the way. And this happens actually often, uh, if even if you have a, uh, a really clean nest, sometimes chickens will bring in, they'll just step in their own poop and go uh, lay an egg, or occasionally they will do the, their business while they're, while they're laying the egg, not, I mean, or other chickens will come on top and try to lay eggs. It's a, it's a whole messy thing. But the whole point is, if you're really, really sensitive to chicken poop, maybe that's enough to say, hey, I'm not into that. But okay. And number four is that they are curious, like I said before, <laughs> which is not not always a con, but it can be because low or no fencing, um, if you have low fencing or no fencing at all, um, they may go into the road, they'll go to the neighbors. Um, they're just pretty much looking for food all the time, but they're curious animals and they just keep um, going. So you'll have uh, messes on your front porch if you don't have fencing. So that's definitely a con. That's something that we dealt with a lot because we didn't have fencing for our chickens in California, which were free range. Um, and they, they, were, they were everywhere. <laughs> they were just everywhere. We would lock them up, but we were really into the free ranging at that time. And thankfully, we didn't actually have too many daytime predators. The nighttime predators was our biggest uh, thing. Okay, so number five is the cost of feed is not cheap. Um, if you don't have a complete feed for your chickens, the, your egg production will be low because they need a certain amount of protein to produce eggs. Um, and uh, but if your chickens are free ranging, um, that can be useful and reduce your costs. 
but um, the negative side of that is that you can lose them to predators um, and you can also uh, have hidden eggs that would happen to us all the time we'd be like where are the eggs we know they have to be laying eggs and they will hide them if they're free ranging um, it's just the way chickens like to operate um, number six con would be if you raise them uh, from chicks there's a lot of things that can go wrong and it can be kind of expensive. Nobody really talks about the expense of heating them during that period of time, especially if it's in the winter. That is an expense, uh, the electricity, and depending on how many, I mean, if you have one lamp or whatever, um, there are low cost heating methods, but that I just want you to know that is an expense. It might be very little for if you have a small amounts of chickens, but it could get very high depending on where you are. So just keep that in mind. So that's definitely not a complete cons list, but that's that's enough to give you an idea of um, some of the things that can, you know, not be the greatest parts of owning chickens. So let's go to the uh, pros list. Um, they, they produce, so number one I have on here, <laughs> is they produce a very nutritious food almost daily. I mean, you know, almost daily, depending on... Uh, for me, I've always had chickens to where at least I'm getting a couple of eggs, even if I have 15 chickens, there's usually, you know, and everybody and it's the middle of winter, there's usually one or two that will keep laying. So that's what I mean by almost daily. I'm not saying every single chicken will lay an egg every day. But there are chickens that are very high producers, and they almost don't ever miss a day. <laughs> um, so they have very nutritious food, they're, they're high in protein. Um, there's just so many benefits to having, um, chicken eggs. Um, number two is they're suitable, uh, suitable. They are good at keeping the insect population down. You can argue that they actually, uh, bring, uh, insects to your, <laughs> like flies. Um, so I don't know how, how you can, um, but they, they like to scratch and peck and, if you're free ranging them, they can keep some of the insects down. They definitely will um, catch a lizard here and there and sometimes snakes, I've seen them do that. They will also catch mice, <laughs> but you have to, it has to be the right time. It can't be in the middle of the night because they can't see. Number three, um, the, the manure can be used as fertilizer in the garden if com composted properly. So there is a whole process with uh, manure chicken manure, it is a very hot uh, fertilizer. So you have to make sure that it decomposes enough in enough time and, and that sort of thing. You don't you want to also make sure that you're not using a bedding that doesn't decompose very well, like um, shavings that doesn't decompose very well. So uh, we use hay. Um, and there's a, a tons of other ways. But the whole thing point is that if you really want to compost you got to do it right because if you put this hot hot stuff on your garden it can kill your plants instead of helping them so um but that's that is a benefit that is a pro um number four is they are entertaining and can be affectionate okay i have a i have a something to read to you real quick this is from my Healthy Homesteading blog that I had years ago. I still have a blog on healthy home, at healthyhomesteading.com, but it is not it has none of my old stuff in it. So I've I had to get rid of that site and started a new one. But I printed out my blog. So here's uh, something that I wrote in 2011, and it was January 18th, actually 2011. And it, I used to write a thing called Mini Farm Musings, Mini Farm Musings. And this one was Chicken in the House. I think everyone that has chickens has grown to love their amusing behavior. I had chickens for, I have had chickens for about six years. And I have to tell you, there is never a dull day when you have chickens around. I had, um, I have had chickens peck my feet jump into the feed bucket. I have found eggs in strange places and had a rooster attack me on several occasions. Recently, my youngest batch of chickens have taken a liking to a, a milk goat, to our milk goat. While I am milking, I often have one or two hens walking in between 
the goat looking for a squirt or two of milk for themselves. They also like to eat out of the goat grain dish while she is um, being milked. The goats and chickens seem to have a, have a great relationship. I have witnessed hens and roosters roosting on top of my goats. So that was all that I wrote, but it just is funny how that is still true. <laughs> chickens are just very entertaining and they, they like to get along with the other animals on, on most occasions. So, um, so that is number uh, four. They can be affectionate too. I know a lot of people who have um, house chickens and they are kind of like little dogs in the house. And it's an interesting to watch that relationship happen with those chickens. But um, okay, so number five is you can sell extra eggs to offset costs of feed. So here I said offset costs of feed. Um, I am not of the the general belief that that egg making money off of selling eggs is a is a good idea is a good pursuit. I'm not saying don't try it. I'm not saying don't do it. But there are, and there are a lot of people who do it and do it well. But they have a strategy. They have a system to keep the cost of feed down by buying bulk feed. And they have a system where they're probably selling off the older birds and, and bringing in new birds um, so that, th that they always have high producing chicken eggs or high producing uh, chickens, which is usually at between their, you know, from the six months to two years is their highest time of production. So more, that's what we did. Actually, we were starting to get into the system where I was going to sell off the two to three year old chickens that were still producing a decent amount of eggs to a family that wanted chicken eggs, uh, but then bring in new chicks and have the high producing. This I did this, um, I always included, I always raised chickens every year because the, the newly producing chickens, like the new uh, egg layers of the year, always um, laid through the summer. I mean, it laid through the winter, like they did not stop in the winter. And that's just because they're so, so fertile at that point that they just really lay eggs. And I, I don't know if this is true in all areas. This was just true where we lived, which we got snow and we got low temperatures, but we weren't into like the negatives or anything like that. So it may not be true for every area. But the whole point is that if you're really going to get into egg, uh, selling egg, chicken eggs, really think about it. Uh, because it's not, it's, you're like, point number one in cons is they don't always lay. And so you're oftentimes having to buy chicken eggs when you have chickens in your uh, backyard, which is very painful. Um, but don't, you know, just do your research. Uh, so that is, but that is a benefit. I think of selling eggs as offsetting the cost of my eggs. So it's, so if I can, um, offset it to where I'm getting my eggs for free, then that's great. But I don't think of it necessarily as an income source. Um, so that is number five. Uh, number six is a, a chicks. Um, if you raise chicks, they're so stinking cute. Everybody knows this. This is why a lot of people come home with these chicks from Tractor Supply. And then they're like, what did I just do <laughs> when they start growing super fast and shedding all of their their uh, baby feathers and, and having all this dust around the house? That's a, that's a con that I didn't mention before, but it's it doesn't last that long. So, but chicks are so cute and they the kids love them. My daughter has had so many chicks. Uh, my youngest daughter, who grew up in on the farm, has had so many experience with chicks, and um, it's just a I just love it. You know, you, it can teach your kids how to be gentle because chicks are very s sensitive. Um, they, they can teach them a lot of things if you, you know, are willing to, sh to do that with your, uh, show your kids how to do it. Okay, so that's my pros and cons list. I hope that was helpful to you. I hope you found that valuable um, and helpful. And, um, you know, if if number six was uh, of the con of the pros list was enough to get you to want to get chickens, you know, which was they are so stinking cute, then do that. Just be prepared, have all the f materials that you need for those chicks and know that they grow really fast. Um, 
So be prepared for that. Um, so the last thing I'm going to talk about is a word on the cost of slow food. Before the price of eggs went up, um, regular factory farm eggs were, were often like less than a dollar. I mean, that, at least that was the sale that I would see, you know, less than a dollar. My husband was saying it was 89 cents when we first moved here or something. But because of this, most people are now conditioned to believe that a $5 d- a dozen of eggs for $5 is outrageous. Uh, but that is because our sh- we don't understand the value of good food, in my opinion. <laughs> That's what I think is the problem. The value of good food is that you pay a good price for good food. And um, we are in this world of fast food and everything comes too fast and then it, then it should be fast and cheap. Like, I don't know where this came from. Maybe it's because uh, we have lost the ability to know what good food is as a culture, possibly. But we have, you know, it was a process for me during my homesteading journey. Um, to, to, I have this, a lot of my blog posts, um, we're talking about my whole, uh, shift in thinking about food and having nutrition, um, mindset towards food rather than a taste mindset towards food. And, um, I also went through this shift in my thinking about slow food, like even food, even producing, raising, uh, slower growing meat birds versus the faster growing meat birds like there's a whole thing and one day I'll talk about it too but um, the the vitality and the health of the animal is important (laughs) if we're going to consume things that come from the animals so uh, that is the whole mindset shift that I hope to one day talk more about about embracing slow food and the fact that slow food actually tastes so much better. When things are allowed to do what they need to do naturally, they taste so much better. And then your palate changes, your palate changes, and then $5 a dozen is so worth it. And you're able to understand how to use it. You'll learn how to how to use a nutritious food in a way that is best for your complete health. So that's There's a lot that we can get into on this topic, and we will, I promise, at one point. But for today, that is all I have to share about chicken keeping. I hope this was beneficial to you. I hope this was helpful. Before I go, I want to remind you that you can sign up for the Homestead Income resources that are coming soon. I have some free resources and then more details on the upcoming course. You guys, I got some good things coming for you and I am trying to structure this in a way that is the most beneficial for you to succeed this year in your income plans. It's not always easy to figure out how to get these things started, how to start an income source, and that is what I'm going to help you do. So sign up with at healthyhomesteading.com forward slash homestead income and then Um, you can also follow the new account that I made on Instagram, which is Homestead Income. Um, I will be posting there on there pretty soon. So I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you enjoyed the longest episode, uh, that I have recorded so far. And, um, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. If you are enjoying this podcast, I would really appreciate it if you would take a minute to subscribe or follow. By doing this, you will be helping the podcast to be seen by more people. And I do love reading nice reviews too. Don't forget to visit healthyhomesteading.com for more information on how I can serve you. Until next week, I want you to keep dreaming, keep believing, and keep planning for your homesteading success.